Hello friends, how are you? I'm Trinik Baradia. I'm back with another new video on Bessel guideline. And as we have seen in our previous video that bank can choose between two broad methodologies for calculating their capital requirement for credit risk. And the first one was standardized approach and another one was internal rating based approach. And under standardized approach, bank assign a standardized risk weight based on external rating against each exposure. But the capital requirement differ for each asset class under standardized approach. So today we will discuss various asset class given under Bessel guideline for standardized approach. Uh, however, there are five broad asset class under internal rating based approach which are used for reporting purpose. And these are corporate, sovereign, bank, retail and equity. But here we will look at nine asset class which is given under standardized approach. And in our next video, we will cover those five asset class given under IRB approach. So now starting with claim on sovereign. So claim on sovereign means claim on country or a government of that country and their central bank like claim on Indian government or RBI and similarly a US government or Federal Reserve will be termed as or will be categorized as claim on sovereign. A claim on Bank of International Settlement, the International Monetary Fund, the European Union and such institution are also classified as a claim on sovereign. So now moving on to our second asset class, public sector entity, which is non-central government public sector entity. And this can be classified as sovereign or a bank or a corporate depending upon certain condition. So now we will look at each of them. First, we will look at PSC, which can be classified as sovereign. So there may be several ways of determining the different treatment applicable to different type of PSA. So for instance, by focusing on the extent of guarantee provided by central government to regional government and local authority could qualify the same treatment as applicable to the claim on sovereign. So if these government and local authority have a specific revenue raising power and have a specific institutional arrangement which has an aim to reduce their risk of default, then such public sector entity can be classified as sovereign. So here the key condition is that if such PSE have a revenue raising power or such institutional arrangement, then such PSE can be classified as sovereign. Now we will look at those conditions under which PSE can be classified as bank. So any administrative body responsible to central government or regional government and which is owned by the government or local authority may not be treated as a claim on this sovereign if those entities do not have revenue raising power or other institutional arrangement as we have discussed previously and there is a strict lending rules applicable to these entities and declaration of bankruptcy is not possible because of their special public status. So then in such case this entity can be treated as a claim on bank and here the key condition is that if PSC do not have revenue raising power and have a strict lending rules and declaration of bankruptcy is not possible because of their special public status then in such case public sector entity can be classified as bank. Now we will look at conditions under which PSC can be classified as corporate. So here any commercial undertaking which is owned by the central government or regional government that can be treated as normal commercial enterprise. However, if these entities function as a corporate in competitive market, even though state or local authority is the major shareholder of these entities, but supervisor can decide to consider them as a corporate exposure. So now we will look at third asset class, which is claim on multilateral development bank MDBs. So MDBs are an international financial institution charted by two or more countries for the purpose of encouraging economic development in the poorer nation. And MDB consists of members from developed and developing countries and these MDB provide loans and grant to member nation for development project which support social and economic development. So these comprise of the International Bank of Reconstruction and Development and the International Finance Corporation, the Asian Development Bank and African Development Bank and others as you can see the list of MDBs on the screen. Now moving on to the fourth asset class which is claim on bank which means that the claim of one bank on the another bank like SBI having claim on HDFC or any other bank. Now moving on to the fifth asset class which is claim on security firm. Similar to public sector entity here also claim on security firm can be classified as bank or corporate depending upon certain condition. So first we will look at condition where the security firm can be classified as bank. So claim on security firm may be treated as a claim on bank provided these firms are subject to supervisory and regulatory capital requirement that are as comparable as applied to the bank which means that any security firm which are as regulated as bank then such security firm can be classified as bank. 
and if these conditions are not satisfied then such security firm will be classified as corporate so now moving on to sixth asset class which is claim on corporate so in general a corporate exposure is defined as debt obligation of a corporation or a partnership firm or a proprietorship firm which includes claim on insurance companies and banks are permitted to distinguish exposure to smes now moving on to seventh asset class which is retail portfolio there are certain criteria that needs to be qualified to be considered as retail portfolio and these criteria are based on four categories first is orientation category product category granularity category and low value of individual exposure so starting with orientation category so the exposure here should be against the individual person or a group of people or a small business and the second is product criteria product which can be classified as risk retail exposure can be any of the following like revolving credit letter of credit credit card overdraft facility or educational loan or personal loan and here the mortgage loan are excluded from retail portfolio if they qualify for classification as a claim secured by residential property and third criteria is granularity criteria and here the national supervisor must be satisfied that regulatory retail portfolio is sufficiently diversified to the degree that reduces the risk within the portfolio and one way of achieving this is by setting a numerical limit and here no aggregate exposure to one counterparty can exceed 0.2% of overall retail portfolio and here the aggregated exposure means the gross exposure amount of all form of debt exposure that individually satisfy the the other three criteria without considering credit risk mitigation and the fourth criteria is low value of individual exposure and the maximum aggregate retail exposure to one counterparty cannot exceed an absolute threshold of 1 million now moving on to eighth asset class which is claim secured by residential property so here any loan which is fully secured by mortgage on residential property whether it's occupied by the borrower or that is rented will be classified as a claim secured by residential property now moving on to the last asset class which is claim secured by commercial real estate and this is very much similar to residential property so here loan which is fully secured by mortgage on commercial property whether this is occupied by the borrower or is rented will be classified as claim secured by commercial real estate and here committee has experience in numerous countries that the commercial property lending has been a recurring cause of trouble asset in the banking industry over the past few decades and now here we have come to the end of our video and i hope this has helped you to understand the asset class classification given under standardized approach in pesel guideline and if you think this can help others then please share with your friends and colleagues please subscribe to this channel for more update on basel guideline and provide your feedback in the comment section below thanks for watching and god bless you all